Presented by Caltech. Information is a disembodied thing. It's bits. We're told it doesn't matter what form the bits take. They can be radio signals, they can be scratches on a piece of paper, they can be little magnetic regions on a, a magnetic disc, they can be little scratches on a CD. So somehow, in order to process information, we have to give it a physical form. When you put electrons in a conductor, like a wire or a piece of silicon, they actually act a lot like a fluid. They're not little pellets of charge rattling around. They act like a fluid. And the fluid that most of us are most familiar with is water. And we're going to talk about how you use a fluid to give information a physical form. We have a source of water up here. It's a little trough that runs along. That's the source of the water we're going to use to process our information. And here's a valve that will allow that water to go into this tank where we store the water. And here's a valve that has been opened so it's drained all the water out of the tank. And this arrow here indicates that the valves are connected in such a way that when we change one of them, we change the other one too. So when this one's open, the bottom one is closed, and vice versa. We're going to make a physical bit. So here's a digital bit. It's a logical one. A tank full of water with the upper valve open and the lower valve closed. And then we switch the valves. We close the upper one and open the bottom one. And all the water drained out of the tank. And now we're representing a logical zero. We made a logical transition. So just from this much already, we can say a lot about information processing in a physical form. The first is we need a supply and a place to get rid of the medium, in this case, the water. Up here, we have this trough, and down below, we have some kind of gutter where the water can get away. Otherwise, we can't change the state. Well, we don't want to waste all that water, so there has to be a pump someplace that pumps the water we've used back up into the trough. That pump is called a power supply. And it takes energy. The water up here in the trough is at a higher level than the water in the gutter that we're finished with. So it takes energy to pump that water down below up above where it can now be used to process more digital ones. And every time we make a transition between a one and a zero, or between a zero and a one, we lose energy. We lose the energy of the water in the trough when we fill the tank with it, and we lose the energy of the water in the tank when we let it out into the gutter. So it takes energy to make a transition between a logical one and a logical zero. And it takes time. The valve can only pass so much water in a unit time. So to fill the tank, it's going to take time. And the bigger the tank is, the more time it's going to take to fill it, unless we get a bigger valve. If we're going to transport the information in one of these tanks to be used somewhere else, we need to run a pipe over there. And when we fill this tank, we have to fill that pipe too. So when we distribute information, it costs time, because it'll be more water we have to run through the valve, and it costs energy, because that water costs energy to fill the tank or to empty it. So we've learned a lot already about
time and energy use when we process information. And that's as true of silicon as it is of water. Now suppose for a moment that we take this tank that's storing our digital one and we arrange the valves in such a way that they don't turn at the same time. Well, one thing we can do, it's a very important thing, is we can leave the bottom valve closed, but we can close the top one too. Then we end up in this situation here. Here's a tank full of water. You can't take more water in, can't let any water out. Then we can take the power supply away, that trough that supplies the water, and this bit will stay in the tank. So we have a mechanism of memory. That memory mechanism is exactly what is used in what are called dynamic random access memories. They're in all your cell phones and all of your computers. Exactly that mechanism. The next thing we need in order to process information is to do logic functions. This is an example of a very simple logic function. I have a tank here which I've filled through this valve. So that's a logical one. I can also fill the tank through the other valve. So if this valve on the right is allowing water in, or if the valve on the left is allowing water in, I get a one for the output. But if neither the right-hand valve on the top or the left-hand valve on the top is open, I get a zero for the output. When you have a representation for the bits in physical form, or you have a mechanism of storing that representation of a zero or a one, and when you can combine that representation of two or more bits to make a new result, that's all you need to do universal computation. So we've seen that the important thing that happens for storing, for remembering, and for computing new bits are the operation of these valves. In order to do anything useful, the setting of those valves has to be able to depend on the water in another tank somewhere. So it has to be the water in the tank that sets the valve on some other tank. That's what we need to get computing done. The pressure in this tank, which comes from how high the tank is filled, the higher it is, the more pressure there is down here at the bottom, that pressure, when it's electrons, is called the voltage. So what we're asking is an electronic device that will turn on or off, allow electrons to go through or not, depending on a voltage which comes from some other place. That's all we need. If we can do that, we can do all of these operations with electrons that we've been talking about doing with water.